guys, Dalek44 here, I need no introduction, but I got one anyway. And you're probably asking yourselves, why am I not on my usual setting? Well, it's because I'm having my old bedroom cleared out to make room for my new bedroom. And the football's going on right now, the FA World Cup. Yep, the FA Cup, that World Cup match of football that's been going on for God knows how long, that takes place every four years. A social event that brings people of all countries together just to watch them beat each other at a game of football. Now while I'm not exactly a huge fan of football myself or the FA Cup, I do root for the home team every year it happens. And while I'm not really a huge fan of football, I am a fan of this film. Early Man is a 2018 British stop-motion animated historical sports comedy film directed by Nick Park and Ardman Studios. This was the first big screen Ardman project since Shaun the Sheep the movie, as well as Nick Park's first project since the last Wallace and Gromit short. Can Ardman and Nick Park make a huge comeback in the big screen world of Early Man? Well, let's have a look and find out. The film opens with an asteroid colliding with the prehistoric Earth causing the extinction of the planet's dinosaurs but sparing a tribe of cavemen living in a village. Finding a roughly spherical chunk of the asteroid that is too hot to touch, the cavemen begin to kick it around and invent the game of football. Many years later during the Stone Age, a young caveman named Doug, played by Eddie Redmayne, lives in the village with the chief Bobnar and many other cavemen and women. One day Doug suggests to Bonar that they could try hunting roaring mammoths instead of rabbits, but he brushes him off. A Bronze Age army of war elephants, led by the Lord Nook, voiced by Tom Hiddleston, drives the tribe out of the valley and into the surrounded volcanic badlands, proclaiming that the Stone Age has ended and the Bronze Age has begun. Doug tries to attack the army, but falls into a cart and is unknowingly taken to Nook's city. While trying to evade the guards and escape, he is mistaken for a football player and led into the pitch before a full stadium crowd. He challenges Noob's elite local team to a match with the valley at stake and promises that the tribe will work for Noob's minds forever if they lose. Noob dismisses the proposal at first, but changes his mind once he realises that he can make a profit from the match. Doug discovers that although his ancestors invented football, the other members of his tribe are too dim to understand it, so he tries to teach them the rules of the game with the help of a local resident of the Bond city named Guna, voiced by Maisie Williams. And the rest of the film is basically a sporting game with our heroes trying to learn the ways of football and the villain trying to win in any ways possible, even if it means cheating. So with Early Man, is Nick Park still at the top of his game? Yes. Yes he is. In a world of live action movies and CG movies, it's really nice to take a break from that and see a classic stop motion film. And even though these days you can see the fingerprints on the plastic characters, I really don't care about that because it's really nice to see an old-fashioned animation on the big screen for so long. Unlike Space Jam, which is another sport film, Early Man is a really enjoyable film, with jokes that Nick Park only knows to do how. There are just so many jokes in this movie that have Nick Park's name written all over it. Like some you recognise from previous shorts like Wallace and Gromit, Chicken Run, etc, etc. And some new ones that you've never seen from him before. I'll take him away and kill him. Slowly. If the film's a sporting story, then it must have characters to drive the plot, and thankfully it does. Our main character, Doug, voiced by Reddy Redmayne, is a Stone Age caveman who's very positive about everything and thinks that the tribe can do anything if they put their minds to it. He was also the one that discovered that his ancestors were playing football long before the Bronze Age and the citizens were. I see him as kind of the upbeat, positive, and always look on the bright side of life kind of guy who thinks that they can do anything if he puts his mind to it. And the actor Eddie Redmayne really brings some good life and energy to this character. There's Chief Bobnar, played by Timothy Spall, who's the tribe's chief. And he's more of the... We can't really do much other than hunting rabbits, so why change what we're good at? kind of person. At first he's very hesitant to give football a try, but once he sees that his tribe's hearts are pulled to it, then he decides to give it a go, reluctantly. And even though he has very little faith in a lot of Doug's ideas, it's never to the point where he's an unlikable guy. 
The chief may be the kind of person who doesn't think that he, Doug, and the rest of the tribe can do anything besides rabbit hunting, but it's never to the point where he's an unlikable douchebag. The other members of his tribe include Treebor, Magma, Asbo, Barry, Gravel, Grubbub, Emark, Mr. Rock, and Doug's pet wild boar, Hognob, played by Nip Park. Yep, the Nip Park plays a character in this movie. Dear Diary, Jackpot! There's Guna, a tomboyish vendor and football enthusiast in the Bond city whom Doug befriends. And she's like the streetwise kind of character who knows her way around the Bond city and knows more about football than the tribe does. And many people would see that she's probably Doug's love interest in the film. And having watched the film many times, I can honestly say that she probably is his love interest, since he seems to be twitterpated by her when they first meet, and they hug and almost kiss each other in the film. And Maisie Williams brings a lot of life to this character, as well as that accent that she gives her. Personally, I remember her for her role as a shielder from Doctor Who, since that was the first time I'd ever seen her in TV. And she brings a lot of life to this character, and I really love her performance. Then there's Lord Newth, the evil kin of the Bronze Age city and the main villain of this movie. He's the kind of villain who loves money and riches and will do anything to mine for other materials like ore and bronze. And many people have said that Tom Hiddleston is very unrecognisable as the character with that French accent he puts on. Mm. And I honestly agree with them even though I don't remember seeing Tom Hiddleston in any other projects. And for those of you who may want a short sweet and to the point analysis of this character, then maybe this will help it. We've got to have money. Yeah, Newf loves money. Or as in this case, bronze is a form of currency in the Bronze Age. He loves it so much that he'll kiss it and rub it against his face. What is wrong with you? Lord Newf loves bronze so much that I sometimes wonder if he has a giant pool full of bronze coins and then dives into it like a scrooge with duck. He's also ruthless and would do whatever it takes to get what he wants, even if it means cheating his way to victory in the football match. You try. We're totally crap at football. You're losers, caveman. Always have been. Always will be. Other characters include the Queen of the Bronze Age and the message bird voiced by Rob Brydon, who I honestly think is one of the most funny characters in the film. Just his body language and the way he delivers messages to Lord Newt from the Queen. It's almost as if he was watching the Queen make these body movements as if she was actually with Lord Newt at the time. And Rob Brydon does a great job of bringing this character to life with his many voices. Use this message bird thing. It's the queen. Just speak into its ear, ma'am. It will mimic everything it hears. North? Perhaps this is ahead about the game. Of course he hasn't heard about the game. I've heard about the game. <gasps> you arranging a football match against a bunch of savages? You idiot! Imagine if we lost. We won! I said <laughs> imagine it! Exactly! <laughs> The mighty Bronze Age, brought to its knees by a bunch of cavemen? When I'm warning you, Nuth, you'd better not lose. Ah, end of message. The animation in this movie is classic plasticine animation with a bit of CGI thrown in. The CG animation for Early Man is only used for certain fins in the movie, like some of the backgrounds and other visual effects. But the majority of it is the classic plasticine animation which is where Arden really shines. And this looks like it's one of the biggest projects that Nip Park and Arden have ever worked on. With the huge scale of the Bronze City and as well as their football stadium. Not to mention the thousands of people that go to watch the football matches during the film. That's the best thing since whatever. One thing you may be interested to know is that... I was actually in it. <laughs> Yes, I know, I know, that's hard to believe. But here's the story. For those of you who may not know, Ardman arranged a crowd recording session last summer at the Bristol Memorial Stadium to get a real feel of actual people rooting on their own football team, as it was more authentic than just getting some archive recordings of it. And I was one of the thousands of people that took part in this crowd recording. 
As soon as I'd heard about it on Facebook and by email, I just had to take part in it, because Artman had been a part of my childhood, and I was very excited to have worked on a project with them. Well, it's kind of hard to make out my voice in the final film since I was recording with thousands of people. It's still just an awesome feeling to have been part of a studio's film that's been part of your childhood. A caveman! A caveman! Just lending my voice to a big screen movie made by Ardman Studios is a dream come true to me, and if the chance ever came again then I'd definitely take it without question. Despite the fact that the film received very positive reviews from critics, it was considered a box office bomb, mostly because it was released in the same weekend as Black Panther in the US and Coco in the UK, two high grossing movies at the time, which I find a real shame since it was a well written and well animated and well acted movie, and it is a real shame that it didn't get as much ratings due to being released on the same weekend as Black Panther and Coco. But I guess releasing a movie like this, along with other movies that are big hits, is kind of a gamble. But despite it being a box office bomb with positive reviews, it really is a great movie to add to your collection if you're a lover of Artman and animation. Early Man is definite proof that Artman Studios and Nick Park are still at the top of their game, and I look forward to seeing more of their work in the future. Early Man is without question one of the best animated movies I'd seen in 2018. It's got great comedy, great plastic scene animation, Great voice acting, great writing, and it's just great to see Ardman back on the big screen since Shaun the Sheep the movie, as well as being a Nick Park project. So if you haven't seen this movie yet, and you're a fan of football, then I'd highly recommend it to get in the mood for the FA Cup and any other football match that you may love to watch. It's a great way to get into a football match and root for your home team. I'm Darla44, and I'll see you next time. Let's see what you look like. Oh, look at this. Oh, you are wonderful.